conception qu'on a du temps euh, aujourd'hui est étroitement liée en fait, à, à la conception qu'on a de l'espace-temps et, et du cosmos euh, en général. Alors, ce qu'il faut savoir, c'est qu'au début, euh, à la fin du siècle, euh, enfin, au début du siècle dernier plutôt, hein, au début du XXe siècle, l'univers connu euh, est représenté par la Voie lactée, c'est-à-dire notre galaxie. C'est Hubble qui, en 1924, a pu calculer la distance d'une de ces étoiles à la Terre. Et il est prouvé par là même que euh, cette galaxie d'Andromède, là qu'on voyait sur, sur les images, était effectivement un objet extérieur à notre galaxie. On a eu euh, l'image d'un univers qui était en fait constitué de, de centaines de, de milliards de galaxies. Avec Einstein, tout change. Euh, la matière agit sur l'espace et sur le temps. Avec la théorie de la relativité restreinte, Einstein avait déjà montré qu'on ne pouvait plus considérer l'espace et le temps indépendamment l'un de l'autre. Il avait déjà, euh, il avait des, cette théorie montrait déjà qu'il n'y avait plus l'espace d'un côté et le temps de l'autre, mais un objet qu'on pouvait appeler l'espace-temps. Avec la relativité générale, euh, c'est la notion d'espace-temps-matière, ou plus précisément d'espace-temps-énergie, qui devient indissociable. Avec cette théorie de la relativité générale, on s'est mis à considérer l'univers comme un objet. Toutes les, euh, toutes les galaxies euh, s'éloignent de la nôtre. Vous arrivez au fait expérimental que, que Hubble a décrit, c'est-à-dire que tous les objets se trouvant sur la membrane s'éloignent les uns des autres à une... Euh, à une vitesse proportionnelle à leur distance. is my friend. She's retarded. So we play retarded games, don't we? One's gotta kill time. She never says anything. It says nothing. Not even nothing. It says nothing, but it wails a bit sometimes. 
twirls a bit and it goes a bit like this. Well, not quite like this, but close. Anyway, it's a ridiculously old sound. Not a cry of pain. Not a cry one shouts when it aches. I take care of this. I take care of it. Not that I like her that much, but it's the habit. We've known each other for so long now. And yet, there is a tree between us. It is coming back to me now. There was a big thing in the schoolyard. She says a plane tree, but these things do not have a name. She says always has a word for each and every little thing. I call her, she says, capital S. One H, one E, capital S, A, Y, S, lowercase. I call her like this, but I tend to think that she's the one who chose to be called like this. I'm not that sure anymore. I should remember, but I don't. It was a chestnut, or a plane tree. There is a controversy on that matter. Philosophers do argue on that. And I guess that's the best I can do. A tree, anyway. A pretty beautiful specimen. Symbolic, even. With its young leaves, its older ones, its branches, its twigs, Nothing was missing. All of this in the shape of a chestnut or a plane tree. It looked as if all the trees on earth from that species were there in a single one. It was carrying that huge forest. Personally, I'd say plane tree. Plane tree, schoolyard goes well together. But it's more a question of aesthetic choice. I don't have the scientific proof for that. This is what is odd. This habit of naming. Putting names on all this has always looked suspicious to me. One absorbs it as a big breath of air, a big gulp of water, a big tide on the skin, a big vision of earth into the eyes. Careful. One mustn't be carried away. One must hold on against all that. Or else everything gets mixed up. It turns into a glide that invades you, stuffs your nose, blocks your throat, pushes deep in your ribs, pushes on your eyes, Till they get back into your skull. Stupor and dread. This is what it means to hold on against it. With it, we play silly games. Because as far as conversation is concerned, 
it's not that great. For example, I drew a hopscotch course on the ground. Up to here, it's all good. But this is when it gets complicated. Usually, one writes Earth in the first square and Heaven in the last one. Then, one writes numbers in the other squares. Eventually, one hops from one square to the other, from Earth to Heaven. Some even return through the course from Heaven to Earth. That's not very orthodox, but it's charming. Let's live it. Uh, do you reckon I should write Earth and Heaven in the squares? Says nothing, not even nothing. It is not nothing to write. It commits you. To hold on, it kicks in all of this. I say it because it doesn't have a name. There is no name to say nothing. I do not have a name. But it kicks in all this and it works. It doesn't like kicks. All of this go back to itself. Air into the air, water into water, the sea into the sea, the earth to the earth. It also puts the arms and legs in place, the heart and stomach, as well as the skull's organs, put themselves in place. This makes you breathe deeply and freely run to bathe into the rising tide sweep the horizon that stand before your eyes it is not nothing it's even everything all this before oneself with oneself welcoming Writing is it nothing. It fixes the things. It obliges them. Oh, and I don't thank you for that. But their business tends to get kinder, less rough. It and I will learn that lesson too late. The tree threw us on the ground in the schoolyard. There was lots of blood in the hopscotch course, drawn with the chalk on the ground. Lots of blood in heaven. It and I have been living in that black box ever since.
we grew up so much. We would sing all the time. A woman now. She says this, it's what she says. We could be 100 meters champions, or pole vault would jump above all these hideous trees. She says it, friends forever. We might even have kids would play funny games, hopscotch maybe. And we'd burst into laughter. We were happy. We can no longer play. I really don't think I like to play any games. We would laugh. We would laugh. Turn the machine off.